Welcome back everyone to my arguably messy printer table. Today we're going to be talking about z-axis or lead screw rod stabilizers. And we've got a few things to talk about because I got three different kinds. We got this one which is made of plastic, this one which is all metal and is fixed, and the newest iteration that I've come across. The almost fully adjustable metal types. Now then, Let's start off with the most basic ones. These are the Cheapo Depot. Not really going to do all too much for you. Z-axis stabilizers. But before we get into that, let's really quick talk about why you would even want to do any of this. So, down at the lead screw, you've got, on an Ender 3 at least, around 200 to 230 millimeters of z-axis travel. Now this rod is longer than the printer, but don't worry about that. So, here's the thing, and this is going to be an example showing the extremes. You want your z-axis rod to be straight up and down, but we need to ask ourselves, what is straight up and down in this case? Because here's the thing, this can be off, this can be misaligned in so many different ways. It's not just an x-axis thing, where it's left and right. It's also a y-axis thing where it's forward and backwards. And then any variation in between. So it can be anything from that to that to that. And the point is, you want it perfectly straight up and down because if you don't, well, when you're on a curve, your, your motor, for your stepper motor, is turning a certain amount of times because it's assuming based on the mechanical properties of how many steps it turns and how big your lead screw is in terms of its threads, how far up the machine assumes it's gone. But the moment that this rod does not go straight up and down, you turn it like this, for instance, well, it's going to turn as many times as it would have because that's the mechanical resolution of the system, but in reality, two millimeters straight up and down, let's say we're going halfway here, halfway up there is not necessarily halfway if it's tilted like that. See how there's like a difference? When we change the angle of the lead screw, it is mechanically speaking not going to reflect what the firmware thinks it's doing. And that's how you get certain artifacts as you go up and the more extreme this issue is the worse the problem will be the further you go up in the z-axis direction so what are we to do about it well you could let it just freely move but then you might get z-axis wobble and that has its own issues that you can clearly see in various things you might print where uh well you just google z-axis wobble and uh, you'll, you'll see what kind of artifacting you get. So we attempt to stabilize it with these rod stabilizers. We try to keep it in a fixed position. Now this rod stabilizer, we get a video of it up and down, holds the rod in a fixed orientation going left and right, so our x-axis in this case. But if you'll notice, it freely moves in the y-axis. And the reason they've done that is to prevent binding from occurring. But if there's binding occurring when using this, the reality is you haven't placed this block properly. Now there's two screws on all of these that protrude through this bearing block and bolt into the frame. And if you loosen it up, you can slide these rods, or where the bearing is placed to hold the rod, in position on the x-axis left and right. But as far as your y-axis, you've got nothing securing it there. So that's not as good of a situation as we could have it. The next step is to consider something like this, which is a fixed position bearing block made specific to various printers. This one is particular to the Ender 3 Pro. And this is assuming that the manufacturer has machined this properly, but it's essentially the same thing. You've got two screws protruding through the block, and that allows you to adjust the alignment left or right on the x-axis 
But the y-axis, there's no adjustment capability. So whatever position it's in, it's going to just be that position. And what I have noticed is if we look on the printer here, I'm going to scoot this to the side, is with these fixed bearing blocks, they never really seem perfectly straight up and down as far as the y-axis direction is, is involved. So you may be able to get the rod in the position you want the x-axis to prevent sort any sort of movement that you don't want there. But because this is a fixed position, if the machining of the block is wrong, that placement of the bearing is going to be wrong. So you could be tilted a little forward or a little backwards. And in my case, I've always seemed to notice that these tilt the rod forward to the machine. So instead of straight up and down, it's a little bit like that. Now it's not terrible, but it is definitely something that could affect very tall printing. So let's move over to the newest iteration that I have found. Now this is also an all metal bearing block. And just like the one that is a fixed position, you adjust the X axis the same way. So you loosen up the two screws and you line it up to the left and right for the X axis. But you'll notice these two screws right here at the top. This allows you to also align things in the Y axis direction and then screw it down and torque it down to keep it in that fixed position, allowing complete control of the X and Y axis properly. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, how exactly do I go about lining these things up anyway? I mean, you could measure it with some calipers and you measure things, you know, going up and down, but uh, that really only accounts for your y-axis in this case. Left and right, there's not much you can do. However, there is an easy way to do this, and that is keep all the bolts loose, just for a minute. So the bolts that go through the block, keep that loose. The bolts that hold this adjustment on the y-axis, keep that loose. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your machine all the way up. So about 205 for me. I do have some clearance issues because I got this LED light that prevents me from going any higher. So basically what we're doing is we're kind of forcing any binding to play itself out. So down here is the pivot point where it goes, well, where it's going to go left or right or forward and back. But if we move our x-axis gantry all the way up as far as really we can go. What we've essentially done is we've caused the machine to go into a situation where any alignments is kind of forced out of the equation for the most part. So here's what I mean. We have now changed the pivot point from down here at our coupler to up here at the lead nuts or at the lead nut screw or I'm sorry, the lead screw nut. So the pivot point now starts here, it only goes up to here. That makes the amount of error that we're dealing with considerably less than if we start all the way down here. So we've got very little that we have to really account for. Now if you've kept this bearing block completely loose, then this bearing block would have also moved into position on its own, meaning it's going to slide left, right, back and forth to whatever position it's going to be for the bearing to sit on the lead screw. And from there, tighten everything down. Make sure you keep the block squared when you tighten it down, because when you torque down the T-nuts that are in here, you might accidentally rotate the assembly. Now, that being said, uh, a good bearing system should have a pretty tight grip over the lead screw, so there shouldn't be too much issue with that, but uh, the last thing you want to introduce is another axis to work with, you know, like rotation-wise like that. So just have something flat to line it up on and just get this as good as you can get. Now, I've already done the one side, but that's the idea, and I hope you guys understand what I'm getting at here. So the reality is I have yet to truly test these out. I just got these recently, but 
I do like this design better. And there are, there's actually one thing I don't like about it. And uh, that's the fact that this bearing is really just held in by putting pressure on the outer race of the bearing uh, onto the bottom of this block. I really wish there was a grub screw like there, are, like there is on this to really ensure that the bearing sits flush because the bearing in there can move up and down like fractions of a millimeter. But uh, well, I'll have to do some testing to see if that's truly an issue. But uh, if there is any issues, I'll be sure to uh, put like a pinned comment with anything that I find to be not good about this. But so far, uh, this is the most interesting and complete solution that I've seen to stabilize the rod without introducing unnecessary binding.